welcome. Thanks for taking the time for um, lunch to check out this session. Um, and greetings from Finland, so the northern cold country. Um, actually, currently it's quite okay there. It's summer, but um, you know the seasons, winter, four months of um, four months of darkness. But gladly it turns out good for the developers because we like the darkness, right? So at least for me, it's a productivity time. So six months of darkness. So it's an enormous enormous productivity boost. But it also leaves a mark, so bear with me. The good is the kind of highest level of awesomeness you are going to get in this session, so that's how it goes in Finland. You have to take it easy. Um, yeah, the actual topic, how to rock your web applications with Vardina Spring. Um, I thought that everybody knows Spring already, so how many of you know Vardin? Only a couple. Okay, I have a short intro for you. Um, so, what we at Vardin are doing, we are making the web application development easy. So that's what we want to do. And at, at the same time, we want the applications to be very good. So, that's our target. Uh, what we mean by applications, web applications, is something like monitoring applications, business dashboards, uh, different kinds. Um, you get an idea. So they, they are not web pages, they are more like desktop applications or they might be mobile applications, but uh, then again, not web pages, but applications. And uh, how we do it is by abstracting things. So uh, if you think of the normal stack of the web developer or the ap web application developer, you have a lot of things to do. So comparing with the other frameworks here, we let the user users of Vardin to focus on the on the on the backend server integration and the web server integration and forget most of the stuff most of the time so you can you can only you can only focus on being productive with with the with the develop application development itself um, and that's how we do it so basically you write simple java code so everything in Vardin is based on components ui components like text fields buttons you instantiate them in Java, you use them in Java, add event listeners, get events back from the from the user and react that in your applications. And that's all you need to write. There are lots of components in the framework. They are like like the usual suspects, like text fields, drop downs, tables, stuff like this. And um, <coughs> they're very much teamable, so if you want if you don't like the look and feel, you can easily change that also. But yes, good looking applications easily. Um, yes, I know developers, they want to do everything by themselves. So this is our community, it's open source framework. So there are lots of components in the framework which are not made by us. So there are over 500 add-ons, add-on components. There are new widgets, new data integrations, maybe, maybe some library integrations that work with Vardin and um, that's very nice. I actually like it so that people can collaborate and create their own projects around it. Yes, uh, part in a spring. So how this comes together. The, it was actually quite recently I found out that it that's actually makes very, very much sense uh, using these together. Um, if you think of from spring perspective, so what Vardin has to offer for those is some web user interfaces. There are single page applications you can easily integrate with the Spring Data APIs, JPA, and so forth. Uh, all the code in Vardin is on the server side, so you get an idea that it's very, very fluent integration. And also the other way around. So if you're already using Vardin and you, and you need a good backend, Spring is a very good option there. So you, you get the one step, this is especially what I like, that you get the one step server integration with the Spring Boot, IOC, all the wiring stuff back to your UIs and all the wiring your UIs together, so you get a nice modularity boost. And of course, the, what, what everything the Spring has to offer for the developers. 
Um, I think it's pretty much clear from the when you see the code. So this is kind of very simple application, but it's a full application already. So one page application, you have a service there and you have a UI there. So it's a kind of right architecture already. Uh, you can auto wire the Spring services into your Vardin UIs. You can create your uh, Vardin UIs by by letting the container to auto wire them and launch them when the user access those. So that's it. That's all you need to write to to get to use both of the frameworks. And uh, the uppermost part, uppermost part there is the Spring Boot Bootstrap. So you can actually run this application without without anything else. Um, one thing I like, uh, the Spring guys made these tricks everywhere. There, so they have. You, I don't know if you know, but you can actually run the jar file without using Java jar, but it just ru running it, it has a tricks in it. And this is another trick. You get instructions if you curl into start Spring IO, so it prints out you know, how to use that service. There is also a web website for that, so you can use it with the normal browser. But it, gen it can generate your starting point for your project. So something like this, using Vardin, JPA, you just choose the jack stack and start using it. And uh, I will now show a small application there in, in the, or the code, but I will spare you from my live coding skills because too little time in this session. But uh, what I wanted to show is a small GPS tracking application. Uh, it has two UIs or two interfaces in the sense. One for the GPS devices, so they call the REST API to report the position. Um, it can be simulated easily with with uh, with curl and the Vardin UI, which is which is presenting the data from the database. And all all this is backed up by Spring Boot stack using Spring Data and JPA. So let's take a look. Um, yeah, maybe I first start the. I simulate some. Okay, it's not up and running, but this is this is how the GPS trackers would call. So what they actually call is a GPS repository using REST. So this is Spring JPA repository, also published as a REST API. And a single entity class in this project is uh, is just a GPS update with this timestamp and and some extra data like speed and course. Um, if you take a look at the Vardin side, on the UI side, there is a list view. And this is how you would use Vardin in real life. So you would create views from custom components and um, uh, using other components to compose the user interface. So here we only use a table, uh, setting the size of it full. So we are using the whole space and using that as a root. And when the user enters this view, we can we can refresh their data uh, from the out of word out of word GPS repository here. So now it's nice decoupling between the service and and the UI. And the same same thing from the map view. This is actually using one of the add-ons in the in the Vardin directory. So it's, you, they are usable by using Maven, just adding the dependency. So it's a map component. Uh, with with single track and uh, same thing here, taking the whole space available in the UI and showing that, and also refreshing the data when the user comes in. So we are zooming to whatever is there, and um, yes, then there is the application part. So this is the Spring Boot application, and uh, and also I I will come back to that later. So. Let's run that and see what's going what's going on in the so like here, okay, actually it didn't maybe my chrome is doing something here, but it's not taking whole space, yes, but you can see g p s updates coming in from the from the rest repository and uh, and here is the map view of the same, so we're actually built a live update application here with few lines of few lines of code uh, how this updates it, it's one one of the buttons good part if you want to enable push like here 
we are using Bush for the communication. You just add an annotation here. So you can change the communication channel from XHR to Bush by just a single annotation. And uh, then I have this uh, Spring repository handler, which is listening to create events on the database. And whenever there is a new entity coming in into database, I will update the UI or the active UI from the, from the application. But that's it. So very simple, short application. Uh, yes, let's go back to slides. Uh, you can try this out. It's in my GitHub, so you can you find it there. Um, and uh, if you want to learn more about how to use Vaden and Spring together, there is vaden.com slash spring. Um, we collect all the information there, so make it easier to start with. And now, because this was a very quick session, it's time for sauna and your questions. Yes. Sorry? If you use this button for a long project, yes. a long lived product, yeah. uh, should you be afraid that you might want to switch later? Would it be hard? Uh, switching the UI framework later or something else? Yeah. Well, I think um, the idea of Vardin is altogether is being the kind of the safe layer on, on the, between the web and the rest of the application. So. Uh, during Vaden history, it's quite an old framework, it, actually, so it has seen already a couple of changes there in the client-side technology. But the concept remains the same, so so I would say that you're pretty much safe there. And uh, you can also also create your own components in the framework, so if you, if you want to use some other framework on the client-side, you can use that. There was other hand somewhere. So, so custom co creating custom components, you mean? Yeah, so there is around 100 components in the framework. So like tables, trees, text fields, th those are the basic, basic business application. Uh, but um, the add-on components, there are so many of those specialized circumstances that we don't know. And one thing that I've seen lately that people have their favorite JavaScript library they want to use with Vardin. So they, they take, take that and, and kind of port it to Vardin API. So then it's usable for everyone. All right. Could you uh, elaborate on the documentation about uh, JavaScript library? Uh, Yeah, uh, well, yeah, Angular is actually a, another framework that doing pretty much the same thing on the client side that we are doing on the server side. But, but what I mean, the library is like, like uh, jQuery plugins. And uh, um, I think I have a good example for you from web notifications. You can, we can discuss this later on, so I can show you how it, how it works. But. Uh, yeah, so... Um, we don't track our users, so it's open source framework, you can use it, not telling us, but uh, our estimate is somewhere, somewhere around 100 and 150,000 developers using the day on their daily work. Sorry? Um, you like companies. Um, there is, you can, you can Google for who is using Vaadin. That's a very good way <laughs> to find out because there is a showcase page. You can, you can see that there are companies using, using Vaadin, like starting from NASA to Puma. And so they are using, uh, for bis internal business applications, that's, that's the whole point. And that's why we, we rarely f hear from them because they are internal applications. They want to keep it themselves. So for example, banks and insurance companies, they don't, they don't want to. Add, they don't want to be an advertisement. Yep. Uh, 
Uh, you mean designing designing the UI or so so there is an Eclipse plugin. I can show it later on. Not time for this session, but uh, you can you can design your UI by drag and dropping, and uh, use that. And um, also, I think one of the tool chain part is the CSS SAS comp SAS compiler, which which we use on the fly. So you can you can create your theming for those components very easily. Uh, but it's everything is very UI focused. So designing the UI, designing good UIs. All right, I think time is up, it says here, so I say thank you. If you want to have a book of Arden, come to visit us there on our booth, so we have one for you. <laughs>